welcome Matrix to Mindset Learn Extra on our live shows here today at the Mindset Learn Extra studios. So this show is proudly sponsored by Macmillan. I just want to let you know. And today it's me and drumroll, <laughs> Llewellyn. Can you believe it? He's swap shows. So I know some of you keep asking me, where's Llewellyn? And he's actually in the grade 12 show. Well, he has been now. And he especially asked me to do today's lesson and I'm not going to tell you why yet because he says he will but I'm quickly going to tell you where to find out everything I will be on the page at facebook.com forward slash learn extra or if you want to get all the notes in front of you it's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn extra or on twitter at learn extra Woo, that was a lot to say in a short amount of time Llewellyn so can you please take it away from me <laughs> cool as it goes <laughs> listen Today we're going to do something quite cool. Well, I've decided that I'm going to show you that maths doesn't work properly. I am in the right show, hey, maths. <laughs> oh yeah, maths. We're in maths now. Deaths. <laughs> Not to me. Maths doesn't work properly because a simple math sum, um, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Right. And if you have a look, Megan, come. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Nice and simple. Well, the section that we're doing today is completely wrong because 1 plus 1 could actually equal 3, 4, 5, 6, in some cases 10. <laughs> and if we have a look what it is, it's very simple. It's human reproduction. Woo! Nice yeah. and easy, nice and simple. We like right. it. So while I was walking in here, of course, Megan's got this thing about her protein shake. <laughs> now, that's the first thing. Now, <laughs> there's a reason why she drinks a protein shake. So, Megan, can you just give us a, a clue why? You need protein in your everyday diet. Okay? Why for your diet? To look good. Ah, there we go. To look good. Very nice. <laughs> then, then I'm standing next to her and she, out of her bag, she <laughs> brings out the stuff, right? It's like poison to me. Okay? Can you tell me what it is? Powder. Powder. She powders her nose <laughs> and her cheeks. Why would you do that? To look good. Okay. Why do you want to look good? Because you guys can't see me and look all raggedy rag. I need to look tip top. Perfect. Human reproduction May comes through. It starts off with impressing the other person. Okay. So she's not trying to do anything bad, but in her subconscious, she's saying, I've always got to look good because there might be somebody out there look, looking at me. And you guys are all stunning. So have a good look. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, <laughs> if we have a look at it, what we're going to do on human reproduction today, it's very simple, we're just going to tell you what we're going to have a look at, right? And we're going to look in detail here and there. Please, please remember, when we do things, I'm going to give you the brief overview. You still got to go do more, hey? Because it's not enough. It never is enough. Okay, so let's have a look at it. In this lesson, and I remember to touch the pen first. Well done. <laughs> In we this are lesson. progressing. So no exciting. Simple. <laughs> In this lesson, the human re reproduction, we're going to have a look at the terms okay, of human reproduction. Have a look at the male re reproductive organ. Yay. We're going to look at the female. <laughs> spermatogenesis, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. Have a look at spermatogenesis, the big word, right? We always look at big words. Then we're going to have a look at the female re reproduction. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and then we're going to have a look at uh, Genesis. Right, so I'm trying to keep my calm going down. <laughs> so we're just going to have a look at those couple of things. Now remember, the, the, the male re reproductive uh, organs and all of that, we're going to go through spermatogenesis and the female uogenesis. Okay, cool. And the laughter? <laughs> oh gosh, my mother is so funny. I love oh. her to bits and pieces. She, I was really in trouble in the previous show because I exposed her expose on something about the lungs and how her lungs are like tar. So she was like, it's fine then. My lungs are like tar. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. Now we're talking about reproduction. So. And now you must know how she's going on. And she's so like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a look at it, what is reproduction? We've got to start there from the beginning. Okay? Because remember, you get sexual and you get asexual. We've spoken about this already. Now we're having a look at se sexual. And when it comes to sexual, you need two parents, first of all. Very, very important. Two parents. You need two, right? It doesn't work by itself. Okay, so I want you to think about that very carefully, some people. That'd be awkward. Doesn't work by <laughs> themselves. Got to have two. Next one, okay? The organism of the same species has to be part of it. So, and this is important, okay? Have a look here. Same species, okay? It is impossible. And I want you to listen to this carefully because <laughs> I would love to try it, right? It is impossible 
to take a little cat, <laughs> this gorgeous little cat that looks like a nice tiger, right? And my great Dane, which stands about that size, yes, and mate them. You are going to get a cat the size of a great Dane. Can you imagine that? Hey? No. Megan? No. That, but isn't like a liger or a quacker? No, like but if you think about it, those are two cats. I'm talking about a dog and a cat joining together. Like cat dog. It's impossible. That's a show, by the way. Okay, <laughs> so it's got to be of the same species. That is very, very, very important. Okay, so there's got to be two of them. It's got to be from the same species. Okay, let's have a look. And the whole thing creates a new living organism of that specific species. So if we have a look at it, um, how, how, how am I going to put this? I'm trying to put it in the best way possible. If you have a look, you can't mix a dog and a cat, as I was saying, right? But you can take a boxer, if you know, and I don't mean one of those that stand in the ring like those big boys. I'm talking about a boxer dog, right? And you can take a Great Dane, for instance, and you mix them together, okay? They're going to come out with a completely, as we know it, a pavement special. But they're going to come out with a type of dog. It's still a dog. Do, do you understand where I'm coming from? When we talk about purebreds, we're talking about boxers mixing with boxers and Great Danes mixing with Great Danes, and they can go on. Same right? species. But you can interbreed those two different things, but they are the same species at the end. Okay, does that make sense? Like humans, right, if we take it in this sense, um, black and white can mix, the colored can mix, the Chinese can mix, the England can mix, the Australians can mix, everybody can mix. Right? Because we're all humans. Do, do you understand? It doesn't matter whether color, race, uh, anything. It's all got to do with the human race. Right, Megan? Yes. Cool. So it's we're like all happy with that. That's the first thing. Now, now we're going to go on to male reproductive system. Llewellyn. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just saying your name because you're a male. Yes, me. Perfect. The but best thing on <laughs> earth. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say that because... It's the only way that I can survive. It's the, 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 the nice parts. Right, so let's have a look at it. The role of the male, okay? The <laughs> most important part, firstly, is to impress the female, right? You've got to take her out, take her somewhere nice, <laughs> make sure you respect her, she's got to respect you, dress up, smell good, make her smile, laugh. You make you it know, sound like it's, that's like effort. They should always do that. Always, uh, busy. always. We're just trying to make it so that they think. <laughs> right, so that's the first thing. Then when you get married and you say, I do, right, and the ball and chain comes along, right, <laughs> then this starts happening. Okay, the male's role in the reproductive system, okay, so the reproductive system is to, it's the most important thing. Okay, we need to make sperm cells, right? Now that is so difficult, okay? When you get to the right age, you will figure out how difficult it is. Okay? Let me give you a clue. I'm going to actually try and show you live on TV. Are you ready? <laughs> nice and easy, eh? Very difficult. That looks Simple. hard. You just do it. It happens. Okay? So it happens inside. You don't have to worry. It just happens. So that's our role already, just to make sperm. Okay? First of all. That didn't take a lot of effort. Just saying. That is difficult. Yeah. It's simple. Then the next one. You deliver the sperm to the female. Okay? So you put it into the, into the body of the female so that the f it can fertilize with the female's egg. Now, that takes a bit of work. <laughs> okay? Finally. But, uh, sorry? Finally. Finally takes a bit of work. But you've got to understand that it's part of it. Okay, you've got to make sure that's part of the man. We make the sperm and we need to put it in the right place so that the female it can mix with the female's egg. That's our job. And then our job is done. <laughs> right. Yes? Yeah. Rubbish. No, no. You're no. going to have a baby uh, and you've got to get up late at night and you've got to look after the child please. and you've got to make sure that they're happy. And there's a lot of process. The man just doesn't end there. So don't think it's quick and easy and it <laughs> ends there. Right. We need to go through everything. Then... If I have a look at it and I bring this down, there it is. Okay, I've made it nice and big, nice and colorful, so that we can actually see what's going on. Now, you can get this picture in black and white on your final exam. Okay, you must be able to label it. Now, I've put on a lot of labels that they might not ask for. For example, let me just get a nice 
different color pen, because we like seeing things. Let's have a look at it. You will not need to know, okay, because it's not part of the system. They always put it in there so you can see it, okay? The bladder, there we go, the bladder, right? Not going to ask you about the bladder. They're not going to ask you about the pubis either, okay? But it's there. This is a nice complex. Because you guys are smart and you guys are perfect, that's how I see you guys. So a couple of things. I'll let you look at the stuff and you can understand where it comes from. Okay, next one. You might need to know that one. So we're going to leave that one out. This side. The ampule. Okay. Ah, keep that aside. That's fine. Ejaculate. Yes. Prostate. That's gland. The cool. The anus. Yes. We need. We need. Scrotum. We'll need. Okay. Uh, let's see. Urethra. The, the, yeah, we'll leave those ones. Those are the ones that are very important. Okay. Now, this is still in big detail. Okay. It's not just easy stuff. It's also in big detail. Okay, now I want you to have a good look very, 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 very carefully. The males, they are cool because what happens is we make the sperm in this area here. Hopefully you can see that. In this area here, right? These fat things that come over here is very important. We're going to go through those, right? And it's going to come up this whole tube, okay? It's going to come around. It's going to join in here. It's going to go past the seminiferous uh, vesicles and all of that, and it's going to go in there, and it's going to come all the way out the front. Yes. It's a long journey, right? It's a long struggle all the way through. Now, I want you to have a look at this very carefully. You see this point here, okay? And this here is the, the bladder. That's why I put it in. Now, the bladder and this tube, they come through the exact same tube. Exactly the same tube. Now, let me explain something to you. While we're getting through, then we can get it on. The male semen, or say, let me put it the right way, the male sperm, okay, they are very, very delicate. Okay, now remember you get two types. If you remember very carefully, according to your genetic crosses, you get two types. Let's see how clever she is. Mm? What are the two types? Of sperm. Uh, of sperm. What type? You get two types. You normally have a look at them. Can you remember what they are? No. Because they make you and me. Yeah. Can you remember? No. See, okay, we got it already, right? We have Tell the me. X and the Y. Oh, chromosome. Okay, yeah, you could have given me <laughs> a clue. You've got to get it the right. I never give you clues. Yeah, but you get cool. the X and the Y. Okay, now they normally have a look at the X sperm and the Y sperm. Okay, cool. Now, those two, oh, that doesn't look very good, but it's fine. Those two are very, very important. Okay, because the Y sperm will tell you if the Y sperm joins with the egg, you're going to get a male. If the X sperm, sperm joins with the egg, it's going to be a female. Now, this guy, this one here, the Y sperm, okay? That brother, he's <laughs> quick, okay? He <laughs> holds nothing back. When he's out of the blocks, whoo, and he goes, uh. goes mad, and he like, okay? He doesn't ask for directions. He doesn't stop at a garage. He goes one way, and that's all the way to the fallopian tubes, right? And he doesn't stop. Are you with me? Yes? Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the female, the eggs, oh, the, the, the eggs, when they come out, they come out and very good. <laughs> Let's have a chat. It's a couple of mates. We will talk. Oh, look, there's a garden. Let's have a look at the garden and a smile and have a tea garden and everything. Okay, so they take it nice and slowly. But the problem is, is that these two are completely different. This one is strong. And oh, this, this one, yeah, the Y axis is fast and he's dedicated and he's going one way, right? The X <coughs> is not fast. She's not fast. She's not worried about it, right? She's worried about getting there. She'll go from here to Durban. It doesn't matter if it takes 12 hours. The man gets in a sports car and tries to do it in two. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so that's how you see it. But the difference is, is that this male, right, he might be fast, but he's weak. Okay? He's very, very weak. He dies like that. He just gives up. He dies. He can't last very long. Where the female, that woman, right? Strong as they are, they can survive till the bitter end. What does right? that tell you? Just saying, think. Mm, exactly. Get there quickly, otherwise you're dead. <laughs> Simple. That's what it means. Yeah, but right, exactly. So <laughs> the wasp sperm is very fast. The X is very, very slow. But, right, it's very important. It's very strong. And the nice part about this is, you've got to understand it, that they both 
do not like acidic areas. Okay, so they do not like acidic areas. Which means, if the female or the lady has a lot of things like pineapples and citrus and all of that, her whole body becomes very citrus, right? So very, very acidic, okay? And as these sperms enter her, the acidity will kill the sperms very, very quickly. So the first sperms that are going to go are the males and then the females, okay? So what do we do as men? How do we try and give the sperm the best chance possible? Do you know, Megan? No. We add the stuff called mm? sailors. I don't know if I, I'm going to try and see if you can get it right. Can you think what it is? A sailor. A sailor. So we've got the sperm cell, and we normally add sailors to it. I choose, choose sailors because it's quite a cool word afterwards. <laughs> Come. What are sailors? They are? Where, where do you find them? In the sea. Ah, and what are they? Are? Seamen. There we go. It's semen. We add se see, yeah. bright as anything. Genius. We add semen. Semen feeds the sperms, first of all. And second of all, it brings the acidity of the female down. Right. I want you to think about that while you stretch. Right? All us men, we give it a good oh. stretch. Ladies, and stay away from the citrus things. <laughs> right. I think you need a break. What okay. do you think? Okay. No, it's chilled. I think it's time that you go think about what Llewellyn has said and think very, very carefully on what the boys do and what the girls do. We all clearly know what who does more. Just saying. Have a great ad break and we'll see you straight afterwards. Bye. Welcome back, Great Twelves. So I know you've had a lot to think about in this ad break and you really, really do <coughs> because we're going through... Human reproduction, that's how I came here. That's how Llewellyn somehow got here. And I think that it's how you got here. So I think you should really take everything down. And in case you want to know where you get the notes, it's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn extra. And Llewellyn looks like he wants to bite me, but let's make sure he doesn't. So, Well, I tried some of this lip stuff to bring out your lips that she's <laughs> putting on. It tastes cherry. But my word, it's made my lips cold, first of all. And through this whole ad break, right, she was as red as a tomato. <laughs> so you stay with me. I can do this all day with you. I was right. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended off with the two sperms. Can you remember that? Okay. So the semen is there to make it less, less acidic inside the female. Then that's the first thing. And then what is also nice is remember that we have got to get the sperm from there all the way through, or should I say, from here all the way through, if you follow the pen, all the way down and out, right? But once we have ejaculated the stuff, right, some of it still stays in this pipe, still stays in this pipe, which means we need to get rid of it, okay? And you will notice on most men, okay, most men, once they have gone through sexual re reproduction, okay? Give them about 10, 15 minutes, not even, but sometimes five, they need to go to the toilet, okay? It's built in there. The reason for that is <coughs> they will not, they will not let the urine come out until they're finished, right? But the urine passes through and urine is very acidic. And the acidity of that urine will kill all the sperm that, and stuff that is left in this pipe Okay, all the sperm, let me just see if I can get something nice, there we go. All the sperm that comes in here, let me just go through there, all that sperm that's in there, it'll kill everything that's left in that pipe and push it out. Okay, that is why men normally urinate after making love. Okay, so that's cool, that's just something extra for you guys to know. Okay, that is the side view. Okay, that's cool, a lot of times they use it, but they also use, if you have a good look, they use the frontal view. Have a look at that. Okay, not very difficult. This just looks a little bit more strange. You can't see the detail. Of course, on each side, if you have a look, each side is the testes, right? You have the main in the middle. You've got the bladder on the top, and then you've got the prostate gland. Now, the prostate gland is where they get... Pr pr prostate gland is where you get more food and all this other stuff for the sperm to survive, okay? And the sperm goes through the prostate gland. Now... The prostate gland is very, very important, and I'm trying to see if I can put it in the best way possible, but if the, prost if the sperm goes through the prostate gland, right, and it doesn't get cleaned out, 
Okay, what happens is the sperm die in there, and then it gets infected. And if this carries on and on and on and on, you can get uh, prostate cancer. Just putting it out there for you guys to realize. Okay, so there we go. That's some information that's useless, but, well, useful, but not for us at the moment. But the prostate gland is very important in sexual re reproduction. Okay, now, I don't think I have anything more there. Next thing I want to go on to is the testes. Okay, that is what the testes look like. It is not a round ball. Okay, let's just get that right. <laughs> so all you people that I'm trying to use as much slang as, as I can. Can you give me slang words of what they used for testicles? No, no, it's testicles. Yeah, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> God, do you want me to say it? Give one. Balls. Balls, there we go. They are not balls. They are not go uh, 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 um, What are marbles. They are not any of these things. Spud, so make spud, sure. You Sorry? know, like Spud the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Please remember, <laughs> you cannot, you cannot call these Spuds. balls in, in an exam, okay? So it's not balls, it's testicles or testes, right? Okay, one testis, two testicles, okay, cool. Now, that's what they are. Have a look at the stuff that's blue, okay? The blue stuff is very, very important because those blue stuff is where sperm actually gets made, okay? The sperm gets made in these blue things, okay? Now, let's have a look at it. These little blue things here, okay, are called, uh, where are they? I want to make sure that I get you the right things. There it is. Um, I'm sure with green. Seminiferous tubules. Now, inside the seminiferous tubules, we make sperm. The sperm gets made inside them. I'm going to go through this whole process. Now, if you have a look at it very, very carefully, there's a lot of different things tubes going up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Once the sperm comes out of there, you're going to go to the collect collecting ducts or the ducts over there, okay, where they all get collected, and then they get sent to kindergarten. You know what kindergarten is, hey? Yeah, where that's my little where cousin is. That's where the little Hi. cousin is. So <laughs> they start growing up. It's where they start maturing slowly but surely, okay? And that's over here in these tubes over here, this blue stuff over here. Okay, can you all see it? It's nice and simple. That blue stuff over there is one of the most important things. Okay, it is, I'm trying to find out where it is. Yada, 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 no, it's not that. Have I put it on ya? Good, I haven't put it on ya. I want to know from you guys, okay? I want to know from you guys what those specific things on the outside, and if I can go back quickly so I can show you what it looks like. Okay, I want to know, remember this piece over here, there was this big thing over here, on side the testes. That there, that part of the green thing there, that is what these big tubes are here. Okay, and I need you to find that for me. Okay, tell me what the word is. <coughs> okay, so now that you've seen that, you don't have to label it in that much detail. Right? So don't stress about the detail. This is for, for knowledge for you guys. Okay, so let's go down. This is where we come up to the most important part, spermatogenesis. Okay, please don't forget, I want that answer, hey? As quick as you can. Let Megan just shout it out to me and let's get it going. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, this is where it's very important. The germinal epithelial cells, there it is. The germinal epithelial cells divide through mitosis, okay? There's a big thing through mitosis. Now, the germinal epithelial cells are found inside these little tubes here. Okay, bring it down. They go through mitosis, okay? And the one stays behind and the one goes a little bit forward. Then, when it gets produced, it becomes the spermatogonia, okay? Which is still 2N. And I don't have to repeat what 2N is because we know, we've gone through it so many times. Mitosis, um, we've gone through it in uh, what was that other one? It's mitosis, sexual reproduction we do it in, we do it through, through plant reproduction, all of those things. Okay, so they're still 2N, which means they're diploid. Okay, cool. Then the spermatogonia cells are pushed towards the inside, so the inside of the tube. So if the tube is here, right, okay, the, sp the, epider the epidermal cells are around about there, okay, so... The endodermal cells or whichever ones we're having a look at, but these ones, the germinal epithelial cells, okay, they're over there, goes through mitosis and those cells are pushed 
to the middle or into the center. Okay, remember they're still 2N. Okay, their name becomes spermatogonia cells. Okay, they get pushed towards the center of the tubules where they mature into primary spermatocytes. Primary, the first spermatocytes. Okay, first spermatocytes are still, if it's gone through mitosis, it went from 2N to 2N. Okay, so it's mitosis, they are still deployed. So they're still 2N. Okay, are you happy with that? Now, those cells, the spermatocytes, okay, they go through the first, the first part of, mitos of, of, of meiosis. Okay, so they go through the first meiotic, my meiotic, that's right, division. Okay, when they go through the first meiotic division, they, get s they become secondary spermatocytes. Now, am I right by saying they're still 2N? Think about that very carefully. There are two processes, okay? The first process is meiosis stage, stage one. The second one is meiosis stage two. Meiosis stage one, that is where you get that whole thing called crossing over. We start off with 40, uh, uh, 48 chromosomes, for instance. Well, let's just say 10. We start off with 10, 10 chromosomes, right? We make two cells of 10 chromosomes. The only difference is we've gone through crossing over. So this one is completely different to this one, and these two are completely different to the parent cell. Can you remember that? That is meiosis phase one. They are still deployed. Okay, very, very important. So meiotic phase one, okay, makes it into a secondary spermatocyte, and it's still 2N. Okay, results from the first meiotic division. It means that in meiotic division, okay, Myotic, you still get 2N. It's very simple, very easy. Then we take those guys, right, and we take it to the next meiotic division. So we take the spermatocytes, right, and we take them through meiosis stage 2, and they become spermatitids, uh, spermatitids, okay, spermatitids. That's what they're called. And they are the haploid cells, okay. They become four. So from one cell, we made four cells, each one different. Completely different. Okay, so that is the whole process of spermatogenesis. And if we have a look at it, resulting in forming secondary mature cells, okay, they're secondary meiotic division, sorry, and they go become uh, mature sperm cells. Where do they become mature? In the. Anybody sent it yet? No, I haven't seen it yet. I'm uploading a picture. Okay, okay well, come on, these guys are sending answers. Okay, I'm getting there. Right? Okay, they become mature sperm cells, right? And they develop into mature spermatids. Okay, spermatids or whatever. Me, are spermatids for some reason. Okay, so that is what they are. Nice and simple, right? Remember that the testes also do specific things. They give testosterone, okay? Which is a big thing, okay, for us men. Testosterone. That is why when we go for to be fixed, if you get what I'm trying to say, okay, they do not take our testes out. When it comes to the dogs or animals, they take their testes out. So the minute they take them out, they don't have as much testosterone, which means they are not as vicious. With us, we get fixed, they leave the testes in, so we can still produce testosterone. Cool, so we're still manly. That's cool. Now, let's have a look at it. Uh, testosterone is the male sec uh, the sex hormone, Okay, which makes us men. It gives us our secondary sexual characteristics. And you should all know this by hormones that you've done earlier. Okay, so let's have a look. It produces by specialized cells in the testes. Can you know what they are? Okay, they're very simple. Okay, I'm going to leave it up to you. There's three things I want you to know. I want to know, inside the testes, right, by the, um, the epithelial cells, inside those testes, right, the vast difference and all of that. I want to know about three cells. I want to know, well, I've told you about one already, okay? I want to know what makes sperm. We've already discussed it, that's epi uh, germinal epithelial. That's cool. I've given you a question, I want to know what that whole bunch of tubes are just outside the testes are. That's the first question. The next one, I want to know the cells that give the sperm food inside the testes, right? When they're still little youngsters before they go to that 
little cells on the side. I want to know what the cell is called that gives him the food, and then I want to know the special cell that gives testosterone to the human body. Okay, I will give you those answers the minute I get it right. Okay, and if I don't, I'll give them to you anyway. Must cool. I shout out answers yet? Yes, give me one. I can't say it. <laughs> Epi something. Ah, it's the epididymis. Epi there we go. Very nice. That epididymis is those tubes that are on the side of the testes. Very nice. Very, very nice. There's you guys are very good. Answered. Well, I don't know. What's wrong? There's lots of people that answered. Must I name them? Brilliant, brilliant, KG. I just want to give shout outs to them because they took a lot of effort to do it. So there let me just go. say. Um, Cello. Cello is always here. Hello, Cello. And last but not least, I will say Troy and Memory. Very nice. Well, well done, done, guys. Well done it. Now, it gives secondary characteristics, t t testosterone, right? So if we have a look at it, secondary sexual characteristics, big bones, bigger muscles, deep voice, fa facial hair, things like that. Okay, that's what it does. Okay, now I've mentioned all that facial hair, deepening of the voice, all of those things. That's what testosterone does. Okay, the, uh, the increase of physical growth at puberty, it makes you get bigger. That's why kids that come, I don't know if it's going to sound right, if they start off school at a very young, or, or they get to high school, you'll notice you start off as this, I don't know if I'm going to say it right. I was like that. You I'm going to give it a, I'm just going to let it go because I'm, I'm to the point as a weed, this thin little thing, right? Now, I'm at a good school, and we do inter-house swimming, right? And I have a good look at what I've got in front of me. In, not that way, but <laughs> in a way that I'm, I have a look at bodies because I've studied a lot, and I'm very interested in the human's bodies. And I have a look at the standard sixes, and some of them come in fat, and they like, duh, and ugh. <laughs> Then you get to the standard nines, and they've lost a little bit of weight. Then you get to the standard 10 or the grade 10s, and they're looking a little bit better, right? And then you go to the grade 11s, and all of a sudden, these guys are starting to get muscles. And then you get to the grade 12s, and they're like, wow. Like you have like bodybuilders, and like, you, you know what? He-Man's got nothing on them. Well, you won't know. He-Man, Superman, has got nothing on these guys, right? That is what happens. And the reason that happens is because we go through puberty, and now we start getting testosterone, and it gets more and more and more. Can you understand? That's what we do. Okay, so that's what that whole thing is. Okay, those are very, very, very simple. Okay, and as soon as you go through maturity levels or puberty, you start producing sperm. Okay, so that is the whole thing. Now, I can go on to the female reproductive system. Which you will. Which I will immediately, straight after the break. Great. But before we go to the break, I need to know those cells. Okay, just I'll... Just three seconds, talk about something while I load the page. Three seconds. Okay, so <laughs> these cells, they are found inside the testes. Oh my gosh, how am I supposed to say this? Right? Okay. Um, Sertoli cells? Ah, nice, Sertoli. <laughs> Sertoli cells. What do they do? I don't know, wait. It says food. Very nice. Sertoli cells are found inside the testes, and they give those small sperms food. And energy. And energy and, and all then of that stuff. Very nice. Something O E Y D I G. I don't want to say. Lidich it. cells. And that's produced. Now your Lidich yeah. cells produce testosterone. Testosterone. Well you done. guys are phenomenal. Cello. Unbelievable. You see, when you get a girl not knowing what's going on, that's my boys and <laughs> girls. <laughs> I'll see you guys straight after the break. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to take a little bit of a break because Luella needs to calm down because girls are in this, and I know it's going on a little bit, okay? But we'll be back right after the break. <laughs> Welcome back, <laughs> Matrix. I hope you had a great break. You went to go get some water, text your friends, told them to watch the show because, as you can see, th we are like kind of discussing very personal things, but at the same time, it's what everyone in the world does maybe at some point in their lives. So that's what makes the world go around, I guess. Anyway, Llewellyn's going to carry on with this whole fantastic lesson on human reproduction, and he loves it because I'm the only girl here in this whole studio. So I hope you feel the love for me because this is quite difficult when you're the only girl filled by a sea of testosterone, literally, I promise. Well, let me put it out this way. Have you noticed how beautiful and red she is? A rose has nothing on her. 
Thank you. I'm going to read you a question that he, he <coughs> suggested that I ask, and I can't say the words, so please forgive me. I love the teacher. He's really active. Anyway, I have a question. What is gamet gameto? gametogenesis? Very nice. How is it different from oogenesis and spermatogenesis? Let it roll off your tongue. Spermatogenesis. spermatogenesis. Very nice. Now, <coughs> it's a good question. The only difference is I want you to think about that very carefully. Okay? Spermatogenesis is the making of? Megan? Sperm. Very nice. <laughs> Oogenesis is the making of? Is it ovaries? Not the ovaries. Are we but talking it's about egg. just men? No, no, no. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking woman. The egg. egg. Okay. Yeah. So oogenesis is the making of the o egg. Ovaries. Think of it like that. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. It's ovaries, so it comes from there. Roundabout. Sperm, that's, that's a good sperm way of it. So sperm. sperm is spermatogenesis. Making of the egg or the oocyte is oogenesis. Mm -hmm. And what are those two things? They are the male gametes. Got it. So think about it carefully. Gametogenesis or gametogenesis is oogenesis and spermatogenesis. You get that? So gamet, it's the making of the, the gametes. So the male gamete and the female gamete. Hope that answers your question nice and easily. Fantastic. Huh? Carry Very on, nice. Mr. Liu. <laughs> now we get this <laughs> stunning thing here in front of us, <laughs> right? Can I explain how the, my, I'm going to show you how my teacher asked yeah, me. Sh let's see it. But this is bad. She was like, yeah, this is your uterus. My... This is your uterus. Perfect. Okay. This is your fallopian tube. Okay. So well, then pick it up. Pick it up. And then out. That's it. What? Whoa. Two balls. <laughs> <laughs> and this That's is the uterus. So I was like, I don't understand because it makes no sense. But this is no the sense. uterus. And then exactly. So now if we have a look at it, there was Megan's body. There were her arms. And there were my two fists. Two little cool. balls. That's how she explained it. Now, that is very simple, okay? You need to know this, okay? You need to know these labels. You need to know the fallopian tube, very important, okay? You need to know your ovaries, okay? So they're the ovaries, they're the fallopian tubes, very simple. You need to know the uterus, okay? It's nice. Women are easy. Yeah, right. Excuse right? me? No, 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 just think about it. No. Oh, okay. This here, compared to the male's diagram, can you remember the male's diagram? Females is easy, right? Uh-uh, but... This is easy. Yes, weight becomes difficult. Okay? Then you've got the lining, the u uterine lining, okay, which we're going to speak about, which is on. Then you've got the cervix, okay? That's just this part of here, right? And then, of course, you've got the vagina and the hymen, okay? Which is a light skin that's over there. Very light. That is your virginity. How's it called that? Beautiful. Please, please remember that. It can be broken by a lot of things. Something very simple, horse riding. How cool is I've that? I've heard that before. Horse riding can mm. break it. So never stress. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we got the first one. There we go. In mammals. Now we're going to say exactly what it's used for. In mammals, okay, in the mammals, which is us, female have a sexual cycle. Hmm. Okay. So what they do is every morning they climb onto a bicycle and they trap to work. No, I'm kidding. It's not like that. It's a different cycle, right? And all you girls are going to know about it, right? And us boys know about it, but we pretend we don't, okay? And they can be divided into three cycles, okay? It is divided into three cycles, trust me. Okay, <laughs> the first one, the ovarian cycle, okay? Or the, here it is, estrus cycle. Very simple. In the cycle, that leads to the production of mature ova. Okay, which are your eggs. Nice and easy. Next one. Next cycle. The uterine cycle. Okay, the preparation of the lining of the uterus to receive a fertilized egg. In other words, okay, that is packing blood against the wall of the uterus. Okay, remember what the u uterus is? There it is. It's packing blood over here. You all got me. Okay, there it is. The endometrium. This is what it is. Yeah, this whole piece. This whole piece here. Okay, that's the blood being packed. That's the second cycle. And then the third cycle is the menstrual cycle. Okay, now the menstrual cycle. Women are so embarrassed. Am I right, Megan? Mm -hmm. Women get embarrassed about that cycle. <coughs> yeah. Okay, now, 
if you have any idea how important that cycle is, you'd never get embarrassed about it. Please explain to me. So we'll get there. So the menstrual cycle, okay? It's the shedding of the lining out the uterus, uh, of the ut uterus lining to get rid of the fertilized egg. That's what it is. Okay, so the cycles are controlled by certain hormones, ovarian hormones in the body. Okay, so all the hormones go together. Now you've learned about these hormones. You're going to learn about the cycling and the negative feedback and all of those hormones inside there. I love this section because it's got to do with hormones and it's very, 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 very simple. I promise you it's simple. You need to concentrate and you'll be fine with it. Okay, so remember it always starts, right, with the hormone produced by the, hy uh, the hypothesis. Um, you see, here we go. Starts, right? Hypoth Can you say that word today? Hypothesis. I could say that word. Mm, take that. Boom. <laughs> Can't say it today. Hypothesis. <laughs> Hypothesis. It's the pituitary gland. Simple. Okay, I cannot say that word for some reason and I don't know why. Maybe it's just, just today. Okay, so that is the hormones of the female. Okay, cool. And I want to try and get through it. Look at that. That looks right? very That confusing. is so confusing, it's scary. Rubbish. <laughs> it does look like it now. But this is part of the ovarian cycle. This is the ovarian cycle, right? And this is very important with the menstrual cycle as well. Okay, so let's have a look at this. I've got all the notes here on how everything goes, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so let's have a look at this. It starts and it goes, if I have a look at it, always look for the arrow, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna run through it like this with the hormones. So listen very, very, very carefully. Pituitary gland secretes a specific hormone called FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, which you've learned. Follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates the follicle. That's why it's called follicle-stimulating hormone. That's quite cool, huh? It stimulates the follicle to be made. So it goes and it says, okay, follicle, primary follicle, I want you to be made. You need to start working. Okay, so the prime FSH comes along, and there it is. The new follicle is made. That follicle is called the graphene follicle. Okay? Now, all these names should, you should get to know. Okay? The graphene follicle. The graphene follicle is quite cool because the more it moves in time, okay, for about 14 days, 14 days, right, this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? And inside here, okay, inside these things, is your egg, your oocyte, okay? When it comes to the oocyte, now remember, the oocyte just doesn't get made. This thing also starts with a single um, cell, which is diploid. It goes through a division, my mitosis, right? Before it goes in there, this cell here goes through mitosis, creating a cell. That cell goes through meiosis one, okay, to make another cell, makes two, those two go through meiosis again to create haploid cell. How many cells do we have inside this graphene follicle? Let's see if Megan's been listening. Hmm? How many cells <laughs> inside the graphene follicle if it's gone through meiosis? Give me a number from one to five. Four. Three. Okay, it's four. <laughs> <laughs> right. I hate you. <laughs> so there's four in there. One of them is going to become the egg, right? And three of them, three of them, are going to become food. Food. How cool is that? Just food. Hmm. Okay, so this guy, he gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until the 14th day when he is way too big. Okay, now, this oocyte in here, okay, this is one of the ladies' specific hormones. They are called estrogen. You with me? Got it. Estrogen. Now, estrogen has two things, okay? Firstly, very important, firstly, it stops the pituitary gland, right? Stops the pituitary gland from sending FSH. Why does it stop the pituitary gland from sending FSH? What does FSH do? Are you asking me? I thought you see, you asking women, <laughs> women don't know this stuff, and that's the problem I have, right? This is very important stuff. Right? For a lady, uh, this is perfect. This is amazing. Okay? They, okay. This is what makes them so perfect. Aww. Okay? Especially these things. Because 
estrogen is producing, right? As the estrogen gets more and more and more, these things get, well, as these things get bigger, it gives off more estrogen. But estrogen over here is produced to stop FSH. Because if it doesn't stop FSH, FSH's job is to tell the follicle to make a new oocyte. So if we stop FSH, we can't make another oocyte. And that is why a lady every month can produce one egg and not one now and a few weeks later another one. Otherwise, she's going to get pregnant and pop this baby out and two weeks later pop another one out and two weeks later pop another one out. They're not going to be very nice, is it? Estrogen must stop that. And it makes sure that blood goes to the ut uterine wall, the endometrial wall, right? It sends the blood there. So that's its two jobs, okay? Now, when it gets bigger and bigger, the bigger it gets, the more hormone of estrogen it gives off. Yes, okay. When it gets to a certain size, round about the 14th day, okay, there's so much estrogen, okay, that in the body, round about, the pituitary gland secretes a specific hormone to stop this thing. It makes it burst. Okay, can, do you know what that hormone is? That hormone's called luteinizing hormone, or LH. Luteinizing hormone takes this graphene follicle, right, and it makes it burst. So if you think about it, before I drop my pen, luteinizing hormone comes along, and let's say this is a balloon, and it gets to a certain spot, if I can move that all the way down again. Wait, where did I go? Oh, yeah. uh, next one, sorry. There we go. It gets to that spot over there, and luteinizing hormone goes, Dah! and squeezes it, and it, the oocyte like pops out. And when it pops out, it goes into, let me go back here. This is, this is where we're working with. That part that we're working with is there, right? So what happens is it pops out, and it sends the egg into that little spot over there. And of course, the egg is going to travel all the way down. Cool. We're happy with that. That's the simple part. Okay? Now, if I get back here, luteinizing hormone makes that burst. Then, this thing here, okay, if you have a look, becomes the corpus luteum. Now, the corpus luteum produces progesterone. Now, progesterone is also very important because progesterone still stops... FSH from being made, okay? There's still estrogen being made because it used to make estrogen, but now the estrogen is not as strong, okay? Now it starts producing progesterone, and what progesterone does, okay, it takes this wall, this lining, the endometrium lining in the, in the ut uterus, right, and it makes it thick, like a, you know, jelly. Hey, you've made jelly before, Megan? Lots of times. Okay. Now, when you make jelly with a hot water, what does it look like? You can swirl it in the bowl. And it's got it a little like stuff at the bottom. Cold and drink. And, you know, it looks like cold drink and you can swirl. That's what estrogen does. It collects all the stuff and puts it in a bowl. Right. And it gives it horns. And yeah, here we go. Okay. Progesterone puts that bowl in the freezer and makes the jelly to become stuff. Okay. That's what progesterone does. It makes those lining walls nice and stiff so that the egg that is coming down, remember this, this thing that was produced? Going down the fallopian tubes and it gets stuck in the uterine wall, the endometrium, right? It gets stuck in there in case of fertilization. It's got to be there for nine months. You get where I'm coming from? So that wall has got to be nice and solid, okay? Then, as it's, it's nice and big, as it carries on, it becomes smaller and smaller. And the smaller it becomes, the less progesterone it produces. Up to a certain point where there's no more progesterone, what is going to happen to those walls? Because there's no um, fertilization taking place, okay, it's very important. This, if fertilization happens, this thing here stays and keeps producing progesterone. Because the minute I stop the progesterone, what's going to happen to those walls? They're going to cave in. And they're going to be sent out with an egg that's not fertilized. If the egg is fertilized, this thing stays here. And it says, hold on, keep sending progesterone <laughs> up to a certain point. And then the baby or the, 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 the embryo inside puts its own progesterone. So that's cool, to protect itself. But this thing here, it starts getting more and more progesterone. When it's not happy, it starts decreasing. And then it completely disappears. And we menstruate. So I've just done the ovarian cycle and the menstrual cycle at the same time. How cool is that?
You rocked that there, Okay, that is so important, it's scary. Now, if I have a look at it, I've just told you all of that. You see FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, cool. And it goes all the way down, mature follicle, graphene follicle, I've explained it. Hopefully you've taken notes, and this stuff is all on the net, right? All on the net. Cool, so that is cool. Now, I want you to go here. You notice that I said specific things, like days, okay? Your, ovarian, your, your menstrual cycle starts on day, one. Megan? Day? One. Day one. <laughs> now, when is day one? That's always a big question. When is day one? Megan? <laughs> Come, let it happen, girl. Sing it out. <laughs> what are you asking me? I've got like five people talking yeah, to you. Yeah, you need to listen to me. I'm important. Okay, go. What did you ask me? Kay. Ask me again. When is day one? Every girl's different. No. Yes. When is day one? When do you start day one? When's the first day? When you start bleeding, day there one. There we go. That's the main thing. When you start bleeding. Oh, okay. Kay. Got it. That is day one. Not difficult. <laughs> no, but not what you're saying. That is day one. Could be okay. 28 days, 32. Yeah. No, depends. That's what I mean. You're looking at I'm the in. whole cycle. Yes. I'm just talking about when is day one. When, when do you, you start, start bleeding? You don't start day one the day you stop bleeding. You start day one the day you start bleeding. Do you understand? And day one, day one, so if I can get this all the way up, day one is when FSH is produced. Eh? So this happen, is happening while you're bleeding. Okay, cool. So day one is when you start bleeding. Now, in humans, we like doing things like, um, we like, what's that thing called where it's the average? Okay, so the average. Is yeah. Okay. So they say day one is when you start bleeding. Day 14 is where that graphene follicle explodes. And the minute that it explodes, that's called ovulation. It's when you release the ovary. Okay. So they release that. That's day 14. And then day 28 is the last day. That's the last day before you start bleeding. Now that doesn't mean that you can only, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. We are different. We are individuals. We change. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Okay. These things are very important. And what I did want to show you is a type of question that they're going to show you. They're going to give you graphs like this, where it's an ovarian cycle. They give you the temperature. They give you the three different hormones. And they give you, see that's bleeding? And they give you how the endometrium, how thick it gets and how thin it gets and how it breaks down. And they can ask you questions on everything when it comes to that. You get me? So that's very, very important. Now, um, come, come hither, my I come forth. This girl, this girl should stop being embarrassed about certain things. I'm Hopefully embarrassed. You. Woman, you're always the same. You're so worried about it, and it's so important. Because without that, you will get so sick. It's scary. Okay. okay. So off you go. Guys, it's been a pleasure, and I'm sure I'll see you soon. Right. Megan. Thank you, Lou. What a fantastic show. You guys were so interactive. We were interactive. It was so different for us. Thank you, Macmillan, for proudly sponsoring our fantastic mindset show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I will be here next week, same time, same place. Enjoy your evening, guys. Bye.